Hello and welcome back to Producing Music. My name is Nam Weary and today we're going to build a nasty drum and bass track from the ground up. I'm going to show you how you can do this without having to know any crazy sound design techniques. So let's get right into it. DMB drums should be hard and punchy. Taking samples from dubstep or rhythm packs is a good place to start. For mine, I used Spicy Rhythm Drums Volume 2 by Virtual Riot and Mode Step. Let's start with a two-step kick pattern like this. Then toss in your snare and you've got a basic groove already. To emphasize this groove even more, I'm gonna shift these kick drums to the right like this to create swing, giving the drum groove a whole new feel. You'll wanna use organic sounding hats to put on top, so I recommend using top loops and hat patterns. To make it sound more professional, sidechain your loops to the snare so the high frequencies don't get too harsh. This will allow the snare to cut through the mix even more, you can also add a tight crash, and together we have this. Processing wise, you can add compression to ensure that they hit even harder and that there are no outstanding peaks. Make sure to adjust the attack on whatever compressor you're using to about 20 to 30 milliseconds so that the transients stay intact and the compressor doesn't limit those too much. The structure of bass in these kind of tracks is difficult to accomplish with a blank slate, so I'm going to show you how to create an easy framework for crazy grooves and melodies. You're going to have what I call a call, response, and shout pattern. The call is essentially the initial bass shot right when the drop hits. With this bass, you'll want something short and stabby or wubby that smacks the listener in the face right when the drop starts. The second part, of course, is the response, and for this bass, you'll want something more unique that fits between the kick and the snare hits like a gun bass or a donk. Because of the genre we're in, the drum pattern takes up a lot of space in the second half of the bar, like this, so the bass has to be short to leave enough room for everything else. Last but not least, the shout. This is the one that makes, takes the most sound design skill, but I'm going to show you an easy way to make sure that it always sounds good no matter what samples or synth that you're using. Here I have a chart that showcases frequency over time. When you're making a bass sound that is front and center in the track, you'll have to cover these three time variables, transient, body, and tail and these four frequency variables, sub, bass, mids, and highs. Cover all these variables and you'll have a loud and balanced sound. I like to start with the body, and for this sound, I knew I wanted a brassy feel, so I took a brass bass sample and covers these two sections. From here, I know that I have to cover more high end, so I added these two samples to give the sound more character and to fill up the high frequencies. This also takes care of the tail since the cymbal sound has a nice decay to it. This makes up most of the sound, but to give it more punch, I added a transient layer. And to top it all off, I cut all the low frequencies from the other elements and designed a distorted sub bass to make the listener feel the bass shots. It's also extremely important to add pretty heavy compression to ensure that all the sounds glue together and sound like one bass. I then sculpted the sound with a couple of EQs, and after all this effort, this is what the final bass sounds like. Now that you have your bases and you've organized them into a call, response, and shout pattern, I'm going to show you some things that you can add to glue everything together to make the whole drop more interesting. Start by changing the shout melody in the second half of the drop. This is why it's nice to have a tonal element in your layering because it lets you create tension and relieve it. Here, I've added a stutter and changed one note in the pattern to give it tension and then release the tension. Another thing you should do is add a chant in the background of the second half of the drop to keep things moving along. I recommend, depending on the use of your stereo field, adding a delay to it with these settings so that it pushes the chant to the sides of the track and doesn't interfere with your main elements. And lastly, you can add some extra snares and kicks to finish off the drum beat in a cool way. And like Cranked Out always says, to drop it, you have to build it up. Some elements you can use are kicks, snares, sirens, sweeps, and tonal risers. For mastering, I just boosted some mids and threw on a limiter. And with that, you have a finished track. I appreciate if you stuck around this far. As always, if you learned something or just enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe if you can. It really means the world to small channels. So without further ado, here's the full track. <laughs>